In this video, I'll be showing you how to install a surge protector on your air conditioner. The purpose of this device is to basically take one for the team. It's designed to take the blunt force of a power surge or a voltage spike and sacrifice itself in place of the components in your air conditioner. This is especially important if you have a more expensive air conditioner, like a variable speed, inverter unit, or a two-stage air conditioner. Basically, any heat pump or air conditioner that has a control board, those are extra sensitive to power surges and lightning strikes in the area. And since the price of a surge protector on average is about 10 times less than one of those control boards or modules in the air conditioner, this is definitely a good thing to have. And now that we covered the why, let me show you how to install one of these on your disconnect box. As usual, the first thing we wanna do is turn the power off at the circuit breaker. And after you have the power off, you always wanna verify because those circuit breakers are sometimes mislabeled and the power is still on. So let's go ahead and open up our disconnect box. All our electrical stuff is gonna be behind this panel. So I'm gonna take this little panel out, which is held in there by one screw. And here we see all our wiring. You can use a voltage detector to make sure that there's no power, or even better, use a multimeter to double check. And what I like to do is to go from one side of the line voltage to ground, make sure I have zero volts. And then from the other side, to ground and also have zero volts there. So L1 and L2 to ground should both have zero volts. After you verify that the power is off, we can now start the install. The first thing we're gonna do is take out this knockout. I picked this side, but these little holes are all around the disconnect box. So just choose one that does not get into the way of the wires. We're gonna go in right here. And there's a nice blank space over here. There's nothing over here. We could also go from the bottom if I wanted to, or from the center. To take out this knockout, simply put a flathead screwdriver on the inner circle, just on one of the ridges, and just start tapping it. I have a pipe here that's in the way, which is making it a little bit more difficult for me. I'll just go at an angle. There you go. It popped right out. And with a pair of needle nose pliers, go ahead and grab that tab and twist it all the way out. If your locking nut is on the wires, go ahead and take that out and route the wires through this new hole that we just made. And now we can put that locking nut back on, slide it on the wires, and tighten it down to secure this in place. Hold the surge protector in place so it doesn't twist, and use a flathead screwdriver to tighten this down all the way. There's a rubber seal on the other side, which makes it a weatherproof connection. There you go. Next, we're gonna to wanna to strip the ends of these three wires. Most of you already know this, but for those of you that don't, you can tell the gauge of the wire by looking at the wire itself. It's labeled as AWG. This one is a 12. So you line that up on the pliers on your strippers with the 12, and you get a perfect stripped wire. You want to strip about half an inch. Most disconnect boxes will not have a breaker like this, but basically what you're looking for, where these wires go, is the ground bus, wherever the ground wires go. Hopefully there's gonna be a blank spot where you can put it in. So I'm gonna put my ground wire under this lug over here. As for the two black wires, there's some debate where they should go on the line side or the load side. But according to the instructions that come with this unit, they need to go on the load side. And in order to tell which side is the load side, simply take the whip this metal piece that comes from the air conditioner and track it where it goes into the disconnect box and see what wires come out of it. So out of this one right here, we see that these two black wires come out. This is gonna be our load side. And the stuff that's coming out of the house, that's gonna be the line side. So just see where those wires go 
and that will tell you where you need to hook up these black wires. The setup in this house is a little bit weird. This is not normal, and that's because they have a power saver switch. So they already have this in wire nuts. Usually this would be under a lug on the load side. So these two wire nuts right here, this is my load side. So what I'm gonna do is simply take these two wire nuts off and put these two black wires under there. If you didn't have wire nuts like this, then you would simply put these two on the load side of the disconnect switch. And I also wanna note that when you do that, you want to pigtail it and not double lug. You do not want two wires under one lug. And before I go ahead and hook these wires up, there is one final thing to do, and that is to make these wires as short as possible. So the ground wire to the lug is about right there. I don't wanna make it super short, but almost exactly to length. So I'll cut it off right here. So me stripping the ends of these wires was unnecessary, but if you're pigtailing it, you could still use that. And these things also need to be cut to length. So since we already have wire nuts here, I think I'll cut them to about this much. And for the wire nuts, I'm gonna use slightly bigger ones since now we're gonna have one more wire in there. It doesn't matter which black wire goes to which load side. Even though there's not supposed to be any water in this disconnect box, usually electricians like to put these wire nuts facing upwards so if there's no water, they can get in there. Put the panel back on. And the installation is complete. Now we turn the power back on and a green light should appear here, which means that everything is working correctly. If this green light ever turns red or turns off, then it means that this thing is either destroyed or there's no power going to it. And that is how this install is done. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the comment section. Have you ever seen a double rainbow before? We just had one in our area and it looks amazing. And while we were talking about lightning, I got an idea. If lightning strikes an orchestra, who is the most likely to get hit? Well, of course, it's the conductor.